The future of medicine, the future of medicine will revolve around the food that you feed your system. It will revolve around the adequate movement that you provide your body. It will revolve around getting a night of quality sleep and it will revolve around emotional detoxification integrated with medicine. That is going to be the future of healthcare. For the longest time, for the longest time, people in our own country, India, are moving away from their staple diet. They're trying to imitate the West and other countries where it is just better marketed food or better advertised food and superfoods and methods that they claim is making people healthier. But it's so, it's so ironic to see that people in other countries are adopting Indian foods, Indian lifestyles like yoga, pranayama, meditation, lentils, rice, dals, ghee, coconut oil. And yet in India, people are still chasing and believing that the power of money that can buy them anything that doesn't grow in our country and that's found in the West. It's surprising how I visit Mexican hospitals and the staple food being served are rice, lentils, beans, ghee, coconut oil, spices like turmeric, black pepper, and over here we're chasing pastas and molecular gastronomy and all this nitrogen-based food and fancy foods, and you'll never find people clicking selfies with just good old Indian food, but it'll be all with some ice cream ball opening up and some white smoke coming out of it and people are excited thinking that they're having healthy food all the time. This needs to change because the future of healthcare will revolve around using food as medicine, lifestyle as the drug that will heal and prevent disease going forward. This doesn't mean that medicine's not going to work. Medicine will work and medicine is required but to be worked in an integrative manner. For too long has the world believed that medicine is the only way of treating and healing people and today we're waking up to find out that medicine only treats the symptom and never gets to the root cause of addressing the disease or the emotional state of someone's mind. Well today we're going to talk about a simple Indian dish where when I mention it the first question that most people are going to have is oh it's carbohydrate heavy oh it's going to make me fat it's rice it's going to make me fat well your mindset makes you fat ignorance makes you fat for the longest time, people have used kichdi, and that's what we're going to talk about today. It's a simple combination of rice, lentils, vegetable, and spices. One of the lightest dishes that you could eat, one of the lightest meals that you consume, which is light on the system, light on your stomach, light on your intestines. It is calming. It is cooling. It has so much of nutrition in to boost your immunity. It is a complete protein containing all the essential amino acids. And yet our ignorance and our mindset, which has been confused by the media and everything that we read and all these protein shake ads and when we try to imitate the lifestyles and diets of Bollywood and Hollywood and all the crap around us, we begin to act like sheep following one path, never questioning the tradition and the value of Indian food. When you look back years and years and years ago in our country, people ate rice, people ate lentils, people had ghee, people had unrefined oils, people even had sugar in their diets. Okay, diabetes hit our country, obesity hit our country, and disease hit our country when people started moving away from their traditional cuisine and trying to imitate the West. When they started overeating, we start overeating when we believe that we have you know, more in our life. We start overeating when we have more stress in our life. And that's the reason why Indian food started getting a bad rap. When people started replacing jaggery in the food with white sugar, obviously we would see a spike in diabetes and health problems. So all of these issues, and yet we blame traditional Indian food, which today the West is using in their cancer treatments, in the treatment of diabetes, in the treatment of almost every possible disease. People are using Indian spices and Indian foods. So what is Kichidi? It's a simple combination of rice and lentils. You can use white rice, you can use yellow lentils, you can use green lentils. It contains cumin, which is also known as jeera, which is extremely healing for the gut, which aids in digestion. It has turmeric. We all know that turmeric is my favorite spice. We call it yellow gold because of the immense anti-inflammatory effects that it has in the human body. Then you have ginger, again, highly anti-inflammatory, great for the digestive system. It contains ghee, you cook it in ghee or you cook it in a pure, unrefined oil. We all know for the longest time we've been fooled by the West that saturated fats are bad for the heart and bad for the human body. The same way we were fooled with cholesterol. And today we're waking up to find out that those very same people who made those rules are consuming ghee and are consuming coconut oil and have agreed that it is actually reducing the bad cholesterol and increasing the good cholesterol in the human body. And all that scam to just move olive oil into the Indian market and make us believe that the Mediterranean diet is the healthiest diet for Indian people. 
When will we wake up and use common sense that the Mediterranean diet and olive oil is good for people living in the Mediterranean region that have different genes and different environments and different geographies? In India, what suits the Indian gene and health is Indian food and traditional Indian oils, of course, which are not refined and which are unrefined. It contains mustard seeds. It contains curry leaves. Curry leaves are a powerhouse of antioxidants, vitamins and minerals for immunity and the human body. It contains pink salt. Originally, people used rock salt. Today, we still use iodized salt in the belief that we will have thyroid problems if we don't. How we've been fooled. It's remarkable. But right now, we have information. We have awareness. All we need to do is start using our common sense, take our health into our own hands and start making these little lifestyle changes. Then Kichiri has tomatoes, onions, green peas. It's got hing, which is a great digestive element in the human body. It is gluten-free and it is a complete protein. Now, I don't have any advice on the perfect recipe. All I can say is in the perfect recipe, you wanna use maximum spices. If you're using green mung, you wanna make sure that you sprout it because when you sprout the green mung, you're gonna have so much more added nutrition. You can use yellow, you can use a combination and all of these spices. So I'm gonna allow the ladies in the group or men or whoever it is to post the perfect healthy kitchen recipe in this thread and that's something that you can have for lunch that's something you can have for dinner you give it to your children it is teeming with nutrition for growing children for the elderly people that's why when you're sick you're given this kitchen to eat even in hospitals because it's soft the digestive system doesn't have to use too much of energy to break it down and for all the people out there who think oh rice is going to make me fat well you're highly mistaken when you go back to civilizations like even in Mexico, their traditional staple diet is rice and beans, rice and beans. This combination of kichiri is rich in fiber, it's rich in dietary fiber, which is going to help you with your constipation. Most Indians today who are moving away from Indian food have severe constipation, which is why when you leave India and you live in Europe for a while or you're eating outside food, you start getting constipated in these countries because their foods lack the amount of fiber that we have in our foods. So if you're not supplementing it with raw vegetables, which they have, they supplement their diet with raw salads, raw fruits, a lot of that, and that's why they don't have constipation. But when we try to imitate the Western diet and remove everything that we have, which, are, which is traditionally grown in our country, we have constipation, we have acidity, we have all of these issues. You have vitamin C, you have phosphorus, you have magnesium, you have fiber, you have iron, you have a complete protein in this kitchery. And yes, you can have it at night as you can have it at dinner time as well. All you got to do is control the portion. Today, most people struggle with weight problems because they overeat or they undereat. When they undereat, they cripple their metabolic activity and the body goes into stress and famine mode and stores fat. When you overeat, whatever it is, you overeat even a salad or superfoods, your body will only utilize what it needs for energy. What it doesn't need, it will store as energy, it will store as fat in the human body. So we, shouldn't st we, sh we should stop being scared about these foods which are rich in nutrition, so rich in nutrition and protein, and we dump everything else. I mean, just look at the marketing around proteins and supplements. I mean, today with all the marketing, it makes everyone believe that they need to have two, three, four, four proteins in a day and supplements and branch chain amino acids to build a great body. That's bullshit. Unless you're an athlete, unless you're training to build a big, big body, then you need additional supplementation from nutrition. When I spent a couple of days in Chandigarh last year, I spoke to farmers, I spoke to local people there who eat rotis and rice and kichiri and dals and lentils and buttermilk and they're huge and they're ripped and they are fit they don't do any of this protein supplements and none of this bullshit this is all the media marketing that has filled our mind with belief that's why you pay a celebrity you pay someone like a bodybuilder to advertise a product so that when we see we imagine that their body has become that way because of the protein supplement or the crap that they're advertising but we all know it's not true most of them don't even consume what they advertise so we got to start using the common sense that we have and understand that people in villages most farmers who are fit who are ripped the women the women and the men they're eating kitchen they're eating dal they're eating rice they have simple lifestyles they are active that is the secret they are active like I tell most people, just because you've done a one hour workout doesn't mean that you are active throughout the day. It is called sedentary active. You do a one hour workout and you're sitting for the rest of the day. It is practically useless. You will not have the effects and the gains that you expect. You need to do your workout and you need to be active throughout the day, which means don't sit for long periods of time, move. 
So I would request people watching this, if you have that perfect healthy khichdi recipe, please share it in the group so we can start introducing it into our diet. It's funny our parents all over keep asking for superfoods and you know, oh, someone's traveling to the US, someone's traveling to the UK, can you give me a list of things we can bring back from there? understand people that people are coming to our country from the west and taking away the goodness to their country and we're going to their country bringing back all these fancy packaged advertised superfoods common sense use what is growing in your own country you have fruits you have nuts you have seeds you have lentils you have spices everything that you need to feed your child to grow them healthy grow them strong and to grow you healthy and grow you strong we have it all growing in our country add the khichdi to your diet it's extremely cooling for this weather you can accompany it with a raita or yogurt or curd the traditional way if you're in south india you can have sambar which is also extremely healthy the amount of spices used in the turmeric makes sambar literally like a medicine literally like a healthy medicine that will boost your immunity reduce inflammation and keep it light in your system which is cooling and calm remember it's all about your digestive system it is not about how much weight you lift how good your food is that you eat it's about digestion if your digestive system cannot break down assimilate and absorb what you eat what you eat is practically impossible have a great day everyone until next time eat smart move more sleep right and breathe deep and enjoy your khichdi it's a comforting food it is satisfying when you have a bowl of well made hot khichdi it makes you feel good inside we got to start doing things as human beings that make us feel good inside most people slug down protein shakes and eat all this crap food and they never feel good but they're doing it because they believe their body's going to respond to it it doesn't work that way your body responds to things that make you feel good in your heart and in your mind